made in heaven, assembled on earth, dispatched to this generation. Pastor Alfred Kyle bringing a fresh word for a new generation. Philippian Paul say rejoice always and again I say rejoice I am rejoicing because today is the day that the Lord has made today God will give you deliverance he will give you healing you will bring light in your spirit I want to invite all of you to join me in the service for a life-changing moment and experience with God please come and be ready God bless you God cannot lie it is important that every child of God may understand it. You must not only hear about it here and there, but you must get in the place where you realize that, that this is the truth. If I pray today, I do not pray because I feel like. I pray because of obedience to his word. God does not lie because he does not have ability to lie. I go where the Bible says I should go. I stop when the Bible says I should stop. I jump when the Bible says I should jump i obey god and obedience to god is my only connection to god this is a presentation of hallelujah ministries international joshua chapter 1 verse 8 we read together at a count of three on the screen one two and three this book of the law Will you read with me from the book of Isaiah 55, from verse 8 to verse 11? The Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come, down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bad and flourish so that it yields the seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish whatever I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Somebody say Amen. I feel an urge in God to leave you with a thought, to share with you the mind of God in the next five to ten minutes on a subject that I believe is pertinent as far as heaven is concerned. A subject that will bless you, will allow you to get to where God say that you will get. Before saying so or before sharing this thought, I want to bring you to the place where you understand that God, the God we serve, is a faithful God. God cannot lie. I say God cannot lie. It is important that every child of God may understand it. You must not only hear about it here and there, but you must get in the place where you realize that, that this is the truth. God cannot lie. God does not lie because he does not have ability to lie. This is important because it makes him reliable. It makes him trustworthy. It means that you can bank your life on God. It means that you can literally lean on him. And those who lean on God can never be disappointed. I pray that in your life you may never come across disappointment as you lean on God. Are you hearing me? God is reliable. Whatsoever he declares, he shall fulfill. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter how bad the circumstance may turn to become. If God says it and you believe it, 
you shall indeed see it come to pass. I'm here to say your miracle will come to pass. In spite of the difficulties, what God say will come to pass. Somebody say, it shall come to pass in my life. We are serving a faithful God. Pastor, this gives me peace of mind. They are main as you trust them and put things in their hand. You can't have a good night's sleep because you do not know if tomorrow morning they will answer the phone or not. You do not know if you go and knock the door where you have met them, they will still be there or it will be a, a wrong address. But with God, God is unshakable. This is how you have to know God. God is not a meat. We're not the fan club of God. you got to have a relationship with him. And that relationship has to be based on faith. Are you hearing me? God is unshakable. As Mount Zion cannot be shaken, so is his love for us. God is unshakable. He can say one thing now and change tomorrow. You can trust him. Tell somebody and say, you can trust God. You can trust God. God cannot lie because he does not have the ability to lie. If I stand up today and uh, hold this glass of water and uh, tell you after two hours that uh, what I have or what I have, if you come and ask me, what are you holding? I say that, uh, hey, I'm holding behind me uh, uh, a gun. When you find out that this is not a gun, it's a, a glass of mineral water, you will call me a liar because I said something. That is not true. I'm holding a glass of water, but I put it behind you. Ask me, what are you hiding? I say, hey, I'm hiding a gun. Don't mess up with me. I'll deal with you. I have a gun. And... <laughs> Empty threat. But you see, that is human. That is us. God cannot do such. Not that God cannot tell you, I'm holding a gun. What is holding a glass of water? He can do that. But you see, the difference between Pastor Alf and God is that when God speaks, he say, he's holding a glass of water, he hides it, you ask him, what are you holding? He says, I'm holding a gun, it becomes a gun. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. It becomes a gun. Everything that exists, everything that exists in the visible or in the invisible has been brought to to existence through the power of his word. If God looks at a broken man and say you are good. You are good. Amen. If you are in the lowest of your life. God said that you are high. You become high. That's why God cannot lie. Until you get the revelation. Of how trustworthy God is. You are wasting your time in church. Are you hearing me? Until you get the revelation of how trustworthy God is, you are clubbing every Sunday in Hallelujah Ministries. But I thank God for in this house, nobody comes to club. But we come because we have the revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach, the son of the living God, who is the word made flesh. Are you hearing me? Now the Bible says, we ought to rely on God by following the commands that God has given. The difficulty in following what God say is found in uh, the doubts that man may have in himself on whether what God say will indeed come to pass. Seeing that uh, sometime and most of the time what God says does not really align with circumstances and situations around us. And that makes it difficult. God says one thing, but my circumstances says another. And it could have been easy for Brother Sib uh, uh, Sibonello to follow what God says do. If only 
the word of God could have aligned with the circumstances of his life. For brother Sibonello, Sibusisu, it could have been easier. Why? Because if God would have said to him, I want you to honor me, for example, with your substance. But yet God sees that the circumstances around him is not aligning with his giving. And God will say, I want my word to align or to become flexible because of your circumstances. It could have been easy because he will be obedient sometime and disobedient at the time. But you see, the circumstances of our lives are not to dictate the word of God. But the word of God is to dictate the circumstances of our lives. Am I speaking to somebody? I have a few minutes, five minutes, and I will be out of your word. It is imperative for every child of God who want to see greatness in his life to move away from just joking and jumping and leaping in the church, but to get in a place of understanding and begin to apply the word of God. We are not blessed because we are shouting the loudest. We are not blessed because every Sunday we dress the best. We are blessed in God. We will be able to get to where God said that we ought to get only if we apply the word of God. But how will I apply the word when I do not really understand it? When I do not have some form of guarantee that God who made the promise, he will not lie. What if? I have invested my life on this and after a while it comes to a flock. What if, what if I pay my tithe, I honor God with my substance, and I cannot pay my rent, and my life begins to crumble? What if? God is no man that he may lie. God is not a son of man that he may repent. The Bible says that his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. You got to believe God and trust God. You got to hear his word. And in spite of the things around you, still say, yes, sir. You can trust him. This morning, the Lord sent me to say to somebody who may be going through difficulties. Somebody who has been praying and trusting God for many things. Even this morning as you came, you came with a very heavy heart. Everybody's jumping and praising God, but you have a situation in you that is still in your peace, is still in your joy. What you show on the outside is not the truth that is happening in your inside. There are questions without answers. Your crowds are dark. You are in the place, in the pool of confusion. The Lord sent me this morning with a simple word. You can trust him. He will not lie. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. God knows. He knows the plans. But you got to know what you mean when you say, I trust God. Where is God? Who had breakfast this morning with Jehovah God? When I say I love God, I follow God, I want God. What do I mean? What is the connection between me and God? Oh, wow. The charismatic Christian, he is uh, somehow one that is uh, an expert on uh, impressing others. We every morning uh, want the world to believe that uh, I I had breakfast with God. You know, me and God, we are good buddies. When we look at ourselves, the way we walk, it is all a show off, a blink, blink. There is no power in that. To be spiritual is not to be righteous. Righteousness is not through your effort. VVS. Very, very spiritual. We want to impress people in the way we walk as if we do not touch the swell on earth. We walk in a very holy manner. We speak. As if we're hearing some form of melody. I promise you. God is here. The 
The Lord is not in you because you have changed your voice. He is not found in your dressing. He is not found in the way you walk. He is not found in what you eat. Are you hearing me? So what do you mean when you say, I want to follow God. I'm in touch with him. I'm connected with him. Is it only when you close your eyes and begin to pray, you see your finger shaking and you feel God is in it. I'm here to say to you, God is not in the shaking. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Shaking may not be wrong. But I want you to know that the signal that you are with God is not that you shake. What shows that you walk with God, that you know God, is not that you can pray louder than everybody. It doesn't even come with you praying in Hebrew. Some of you, you better pray in your mother tongue. What shows that God is with me is know that I can call his name in some languages that I have learned from my pastor or from the Bible school. You are Jehovah Ra. You are Shama. You are Chikinu. You are El Gibo. Once somebody say, as many speak Chinese, we speak Christianese. You must hear some of us pray. Not that it's wrong to pray, but we have to understand that what makes us connect with God is not the kind of vocabulary we use in the service. Lord, I give you all the glory. I join with the angels in heaven who say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. It is good to pray well. But what shows that you are with God is not that you pray well. There must be something else. I want to bring the church of the living God to a place of truth. Where we all, as the world says, smell the coffee and wake up. Jehovah. Jehovah Chikeno. Mercy Kedek, Goliath, uh, Bakuk, Raya Kaka Kaka. I was once in a seminary, and before praying, the present worship leader went on his knees, right on the pulpit. Hello, hello, Lama Sabakani. I was confused. What did he just say? Hello, <laughs> hello. Lama Sabachthani. I remember Jesus prayed that prayer on the cross of Calvary. The only time he prayed that according to what the Bible speaks of in the book of Psalm. He brought it and cried unto God because he was carrying sin. And God had departed from him because of sin. Not because he didn't have bread. Not because his shoes was yellow. But he impressing this pastor from Hallelujah Ministries that just came to church and was already in the pulpit. I gotta show this brother pastor what I have learned to know in God. I will impress this man. He will go back to his Hallelujah Ministries knowing that in our church I know God. So hello, hello, Lama Sabaktani. In English, it's translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If God has forsaken you from my choir, please leave us alone. We want spirit filled. God's people on the mark. Are uh, you hearing me? But you see, we come across schemes. We know how to walk as Christians. But is that what makes me a Christian? I want you to look at the person next to you and say, why do you say you are a child of God? On the other side, change your question. Say, what connects you with God? 
Go back to the first person and say that. Uh, why do you say that uh, you have an intimate relationship with God? You, you gotta stop one day and begin to wonder. Soon, very soon, Jehovah will come. Will you be part of those who will go? The qualifying factor is not that uh, you come to church Sunday after Sunday. That is not the qualifying factor. Being in the assemblies of the righteous doesn't make you righteous. A piece of wood can remain in water. It will not turn into a fish. But what do I mean? That I know God. That I'm walking with God. I'll tell you what I mean. I mean that I know his word. I obey his word and I'm walking with his word. If you do not know the word of God, if you cannot obey the word of God, you are not his. God is not seen in the air. God is seen in his word. We connect with God through the word. We trust his word. We Live by his word. And we see the glory that he has promised. In such a great day. In such an atmosphere. In such a house. Do not be of those who just come and sit and go. Be of those who go back to the word. Hence every morning in Alleluia Ministries. We hold our Bible up high and declare. This is my Bible. I am what the Bible says I am. I have what he says I have. I can do what he says I can do. Our connection is with the word. John chapter 1 verse 1 say, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So you can't show God in you by you praying. But you can show God in you by you observing the word of God. The same mouth that speaks in tongue goes out cursing. The same person that lays a hand goes threatening others. The same hand that comes and says, receive on the other side. Sister in the Lord, filled in the Holy Ghost. Singing in the choir. Or praising God in the congregation. Filled with the Holy Ghost. When she begins to praise God. Ah, it feels like fire has come. Do you know that you can manipulate people through the power of your voice? <laughs> they never must move. Something is happening and we call it the Holy Ghost. Sometime and many times it is no Holy Ghost. It is a scam. We call it a Holy Ghost scam. Praising God, loving God. Every time we look at her, we say that the world daughter of Zion. Are you a daughter of Zion back home? When you go to your children, when you go to your husband, what will your husband say if Pastor Arthur has to come to you with a microphone and interview your husband? Is he of those who say that, hey, I have married a Jezebel. Pastor, please take her and keep her in church. Are you of those? So coming to church, screaming and shouting, what does it do to you? Here, you're powerful. You walk in a certain manner that you feel that the devil is afraid by your walk. A young man one day say, me I don't play, yeah? <laughs> me I don't play. What does it mean? Here, you're a Holy Ghost fire man. Back home, the same hand that lays hand on people is the same hand that you raise on your children and on your wife. Shame on you. A real man 
doesn't use force to lead. A real man does not abuse. A real man does not oppress others. My pastor always say, never beat your wife, not even with a flower. (laughs) Never do such. A real man will never raise his hand against his wife. But you got to understand, we are born children, but a man is grown. You can be old, but you're not yet a man. You are not born a man. You grow to become a man. Paul said, when I was a child, I speak as a child. Many of us are sitting at that level. We need to grow as men. Because a real man sets authority that protects, that governs. I'm a child of God. I love God. I live with God. What is the proof and the essence of your Christianity? Join the choir if you want to make noise. The Lord is telling me. Many say the Lord has said when the Lord didn't say. Leave God alone. Give God a break. Will you now use the name of the Lord in vain? The Bible says you shall not use the name of the Lord in vain. What shows that I'm a child of God? I pay my tithe. I obey the word of the living God. I go where the Bible says I should go. I stop when the Bible says I should stop. I jump when the Bible says I should jump. I obey God. And obedience to God is my only connection to God. Are you hearing me? The greatest price that you ought to pray in your Christian life uh, is the price of obedience. Uh, If I pray today, I do not pray because I feel like. I pray because of obedience to his word. If only the church of the living God will arise to a place of obedience. Where truthfully we obey God. We stop the chicky chicky, Majika Jika. You can't see me. My time is now. We'll find you. <laughs> if only the church of the living God will align with the word of God, we will move from one glory to another. We will move from this level to another. Are you hearing me? Today is a special day, and especially to me. And if ever I have to release something, let it be the truth that will help you. It might be bitter for one, but let it be the greatest blessing. Oh, how much I would love to declare prophetic words over you. But I know that you begin to grow as you sit down and reflect in your life. And know if I do this, God will do this. But why should I do this? I can safely do this because it cannot lie. If I do what God say do, I will enjoy what God say I should enjoy. This book of the Lord, therefore, shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate upon it day and night to observe carefully everything in it. This book, this book, of the law shall not depart. This is what makes you a Christian, not your outlook. The cross you wear doesn't make you a Christian. Which doctors love crosses? Carrying a Bible that you do not use doesn't make you a Christian. Say this book of the law. Shall not depart away. Do you live according to the word of God? If you do not live according to the word of God. All you come to church for. Is for pastor to dish out a miracle to you. 
Pastor, I'm here. My finances are in Shambok. Dish one miracle, financial miracle. And Pastor say, we have transport. Ah! You're missing the point. Are you hearing me? We have transport. Amen. You'll be the best. Hey. From glory to glory. Ah. Obey the word of God. Listen to me. The truth in God is, I remember the days of my life, I had said to God, I have nobody else but you. The God of the Bible is real. God of the Bible is real. This has been tested and proven. I am a sign of his faithfulness. With nobody next to me, with nothing close to me, I decided I will follow the God of the Bible. The word of God is a bankable tool. You can literally read, apply, and see the result. I say, God, I will do what you say. I moved away from the blink blink. The blink blink does not benefit you. It benefits others, not you. It may set the atmosphere. You go home the same way you came after screaming. Take a decision. Say, I will obey God in spite of the cost. Because you got to know, obedience to the word of God costs a lot. But it pays well. It costs a lot, but it pays well. Say to yourself, if God says it, I will do it. Remember our father, Abraham. God asked of his son. Which kind of God will ask you to kill your own son? And he said, the one attached to your heart. The one you love. All kind of thoughts were. But are flying over his head. But Abraham has taken a decision. No matter how ridiculous I will be. No matter how many people will judge me after I've done this. No matter how the change will uh, come to my life after I've done this. I will obey the Lord, my God. I will read the word. I will get the instruction and I will apply it. For God says his word will not return to him void. If I will apply the word of God. It will not go back to God void. This year is your year of greatness. This year will not go by with you not seeing your miracle in the name of Jesus. The devil that flies by day or by night will not steal that which God has released from heaven to your life in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. The weapon formed against you will not prosper. You are invincible in God. You are called to stand, to arise, and to jump high. But believe you me, for this to become reality, for you to experience, you must be a child of obedience. We are all Christians. Why are others prospering? Others not. Why is it that others get a miracle? And others not. You got to do what you ought to do. The Bible says, if. You obey the Lord your God. And you are careful in observing his command. These blessings the Lord will cause to come upon you and overtake you. If there is a condition. Are you hearing me? Don't live your life anyhow and expect a miracle. There are things you ought to do. There are things I have to do. If all of us will do what we need to do, I promise you, God is reliable. He will keep his part. Are you hearing me? God is what? Reliable. You can't go wrong. The best choice in life is the choice of obeying God. And the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. I want everybody to stand up. From my heart, I have spoken. May this word find a dwelling place in your spirit. That you live in obedience 
Lift your hands and close your eyes. Say, Lord, make me an obedient child. Begin to pray. Commit yourself to obedience. No matter how difficult it is, say, Lord, give me the courage and the power I need. Begin to speak to God.